Welcome to the Inner Sanctum. Because today we're gonna to be talking about the Inner Sanctum Mysteries Collection. These are a collection of black and white horror films. They were all put in a box set together by Mill Creek, this box set right here, and today, we're gonna talk about it. Well, what's going on, my friends? Welcome again to the Cobwebs channel. My name is Daniel, and while this box set came out two, three years ago-ish, something like that, I finally finished going through it, and I'm really excited to tell you about these movies. So I'm gonna go through all of the movies chronologically, tell you what they're about, what they're like, what I think of them, and then at the end, I'm gonna do a ranking, my personal ranking of my favorite of these movies to my least favorite. But first of all, before we do that, what is the Inner Sanctum? So originally, Originally, The Inner Sanctum was a radio show of mysteries, of murder thrillers that played on the radio back in the day, and uh, they finally ended up turning them into a series of movies. Now, in the 1940s, it's not like people had TVs in their house to watch TV shows, so there were a lot of series of movies at this time, of like hour-long movies, something like that, that followed very similar themes, very similar characters. The Charlie Chan series jumps to mind right now, but this is a, an example of the movies not all following the same character, but following the same actor, playing similar characters, and going through different murder mysteries. So when these got turned into movies, they weren't exactly adaptions of the radio shows, at least not the ones that I know about. There may be one or two were, uh, but for the most part, they were original movies. All starring Lon Chaney Jr., which is really, really cool. He's great in these. He's really well suited for these movies because Lon Chaney Jr., as we know from watching him in The Wolfman, is really good at playing desperate men, at playing men who have a lot of inner turmoil, are, are very tormented, um, who are very depressed and feel like the world is crashing in on them. That's the character of the Wolfman, and that's mostly who he plays in these movies. His characters are usually some kind of genius, very successful, very well regarded, often has a very beautiful wife or fiance, and then gets pulled into some horrible web of murder, often not even really knowing if he's the killer or not. That's a pretty similar theme that goes through these movies. So they're perfect characters for him. He's fantastic. There's some other actors that pop up uh, more than once through these, but for the most part, it's kind, of, it's kind of a rotating supporting cast that you get through these movies. Now in these films, you're not gonna get a lot of visual flair. You're not gonna get like monsters. There's not gonna be a lot visually to differentiate these movies. The strengths of these movies really is their scripts, their stories. The fact that these are all about an hour long and they're all, almost without exception, very consistent in just being a tight, well-paced, contained, well-told mystery. And that is where the strength of these comes. So they're really fun movies to either watch maybe first thing in the morning or like right before bed, just something short to kind of uh, relax to because they're just relaxing, cozy mysteries. Uh, I think they are good for the spooky season, even though I think someone could argue they're not overtly horror. I still think they fit very well for the spooky season. Uh, there is varying degrees. Some of them are more straight mystery. Some of them veer into horror a little bit more. But with all that said, let's talk about it. Let's talk about these movies individually. Starting off with the first movie in the series, Calling Dr. Death from 1943. After a blackout where he loses his memories of the last few days, neurologist Dr. Steele is told that his wife has been brutally murdered. Steele, aware of his conniving wife's infidelity, believes he may have been the killer and enlists the aid of his pretty nurse, Stella, to hypnotize him into recovering his lost memories. So Calling Dr. Death, I would say, is the simplest, purest, example of exactly what an inner sanctum mystery is. Right out the gate, this really sets the template for the kind of movies you're going to be watching. You're going to see Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, be somebody very successful. You're going to see him torn between two women, in this case his wife, who he has a terrible relationship with, and his nurse, who he much more so wants to be with. And you're going to see a murder mystery where he doesn't even know if he's the killer or not. Because he has this blackout for some reason, he's not sure why, uh, he thinks it's possible 
that he could have killed his wife. He had motive. He had opportunity. It solves a lot of his problems, her being dead, because they had a horrible relationship and he did want out. But he really doesn't know if he did it or not. It also starts a trend through a lot of these movies where you get narration from Ryan Cheney Jr. into the inner sanctum, which is the inner sanctum of the mind, as a floating head in a crystal ball will tell you at the opening of all of these movies that it's all about the inner sanctum of the mind. You get into Lon Chaney Jr.'s mind through this narration, whispering narration, where he whispers it all, which is spooky. I think it does add a spooky quality to this movie that would otherwise be a pretty straightforward murder thriller. Now, like I said, these movies are really consistent. This is a three-star movie. These movies are mostly consistent, solid, good, good time, one hour long, three-star movies. But one way to differentiate them is the supporting cast. And the standout of the supporting cast for this movie is definitely J. Carol Nash as the police inspector who's investigating the murder of Lon Chaney Jr.'s wife. He's fantastic because he kind of feels like the villain of the movie. Now, he's not the murderer, of course, not in that way, but he is Lon Chaney Jr.'s antagonist. He is this mean cop who is so convinced that Lon Chaney Jr. is the killer, even though he doesn't have evidence at this point, and he's just picking and prodding at Lon Chaney Jr., being such a jerk. Is he going to nail Lon Chaney Jr. for murder, regardless of if he did it or not? You're not even sure. J. Carroll Nash is really good in this, really fun to see him, and fortunately, we are gonna see him in this series once again. I really like Calling Dr. Death. I think it kicks this series off in a really good way, and in a way that tells you right out the gate, this is exactly what these movies are. Now, after Calling Dr. Death was a success, Universal launched right into the production of the next Inner Sanctum mystery, and this time, they actually used a novel as the inspiration for it. They based the film on a novel, which is Weird Woman from 1944, which is based on the book The Conjure Wife. And if The Conjure Wife sounds familiar to you, well, it's probably because Burn Witch Burn was also based on this novel, which is one of my favorite horror films from the 1960s, one of my favorite witch films of all time. Such a great, great movie. Now, this is the shorter, cheaper version of the story, but still very much that story. After bringing his beautiful new wife, Paula, home to America from a remote island on which she was raised, Professor Norman Reed begins to feel the clash between his world of science and hers of voodoo rituals and witchcraft. Norman's friends also sense Paula's strangeness and soon their meddling gossip and suspicious scheming push the woman to use her magic to defend herself and her husband and maybe even to kill. So Weird Woman, and by the way, Weird Woman, such a terrible title. I mean, The Conjure Wife was right there. That's a way better title. Or imagine if they called it Witchy Woman. Ooh, witchy woman. That would be pretty fun. All in all, it's just one of my favorite witch stories. I really appreciate how it's not just witches are bad and evil. It's a little bit of a clash between good and bad witches because his wife is a witch, but she's beautiful, wonderful. She's a great wife. They love each other. This isn't about her downfall or him discovering that his wife is something evil. It's rather that she's doing protection spells to him to help him in his career and in their life. And when he forces her to throw all that away, that's when things really start getting bad. Now, one thing I really appreciate about this movie, I, I said overall these movies don't tend to have a lot of visual flair. They look very visually consistent. A lot of people talking in suits and such like that. This you get a little bit more visual style because of the flashbacks to the voodoo rituals and the witchcraft. That's some different imagery than you're going to get in any of these other movies. Now, as far as the supporting cast, you've got Evelyn Anchors in here, who was Gwen from the original The Wolfman with Lon Chaney Jr. Always great to see her in a classic horror film in any movie at all. And uh, she's kind of a villain in this. Really love her. It's just always so good to see her. And we're going to see her again before this series is over. And Elizabeth Russell from Cat People also gives a really good performance in this one. I'm a big fan of Weird Woman. I think the series continues to get really, really strong. And while it's not as good as Burn Witch Burn, this is just a great story. So it's kind of hard to mess up as long as you're telling it competently. And they definitely are. Now in the very same year, 1944, we got the next mystery with Dead Man's eyes. Artist David Stewart is accidentally blinded while working on a portrait that will be his masterpiece. His fiance's father generously offers his eyes for a sight restoring operation, but there's only one hitch. Stewart has to wait until after the man dies. Not surprisingly, when the benefactor does die a very premature death, suspicion 
falls on the artist. Well, I do think the first Inner Sanctum Mysteries have more than enough horror content to still make them feel like horror films. This one is very much a straight up thriller murder mystery. Not a lot of horror about this one, but it's a pretty good mystery. But I do think this is where the quality starts to dip off a little bit. Now, consistent with the series, Lon Chaney Jr. is an artistic genius. He's always some kind of genius in these movies. And it's this huge blow as a painter, as an artist, when he is blinded. And Lon Chaney Jr., he gets the opportunity to give a really good performance in this movie, I think. He is maybe the, 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 the most dramatic example in this series of a broken man. Uh, and you really do feel his pain. I, I, do, I just think that's what Lon Chaney Jr. does best, is be depressed and desperate. This is a pretty compelling mystery, uh, pretty interesting. I do think, though, it's hampered by the fact that I think it's got the weakest actor in the entire series. I hope I pronounced this right, but I believe her name is Aquanetta, and she is his model who he's painting, and she's sort of supposed to be the femme fatale, and she's just a very weak actress. The performance is not there, but even so, it's just a solid story, solid mystery. These movies are very consistent. Now let's jump ahead to the next year, 1945, where we will see all three remaining Inner Sanctum mysteries come out. This is the frozen ghost. When a man dies of a heart attack while under hypnosis, the stage and radio mentalist believes he has willed him to die because he was angry at him. Riddled with guilt, the mentalist cancels further shows breaks off his engagement to his female partner who can read minds while in a hypnotic trance and takes refuge in an eerie wax museum in the home of another woman friend. So if you heard that synopsis and thought, okay, but where do the ghosts come in? Where is the frozen ghost? The answer is, um, there, it's not there, man. It's just not there. There are no ghosts in this movie. Now the title of this movie was the reason, this was the first of these movies that I checked out. I remember it was on Halloween night, the year that I got this. I had watched the movies that I was intending to watch for Halloween night. I had a little bit more time and I thought, let me put on an hour long movie. I'll watch an inner sanctum mystery. And I chose the frozen ghost because it sounded the spookiest. There are no ghosts in this movie though. So, oh well. Now I do think at this point in the series, this is the least interesting story. It just doesn't all seem to connect. You've got Lon Chaney Jr. as a mentalist. He believes that he has murdered someone just with his mind while hypnotizing him. But then because he feels guilty about that even though the police are convinced that's not what happened and they don't hold him or anything like that he goes and stays in a spooky wax museum so the wax museum and the mentalist stuff don't really connect in the wax museum there's kind of a creepy guy who's like forming wax figures there ends up being a missing person in there and they're not sure what happened to her and just none of this stuff really connects like there's no reason that this is in a wax museum the wax museum doesn't really come into play like it's a house of wax or something like that and him murdering people with his mind mind that never really comes into play either he just feels guilty about this thing that the movie pretty much convinces you didn't happen so i just think for an hour-long movie these movies need to just be tight contained stories that just tell a good story quickly with good pacing and even though this is only an hour long it's not it's not super easy to grasp or explain what this is really about it's a little bit scattered a little bit all over the place it's not great but I do still enjoy it. I love seeing Evelyn Anchors. She is his fiance in this. She was actually pregnant when they filmed it. And I do think they hide it pretty well, but they do have to hide it with heavy coats or holding big things and such like that. But congratulations, good for her. This was, this, that was a very long time ago. Um, I also wanna shout out Elena Verdugo who is in this. She was actually the gypsy girl who's in love with Lon Chaney Jr. in House of Frankenstein. Really cool to see her and Lon Chaney Jr. back together again. The movie is perfectly fine, but definitely Definitely never gets any better than that. Next up, Strange Confession, also from 1945. A scientist shows up at the home of a former schoolmate who is now a successful lawyer and tells him he has a strange and bizarre confession to tell him about the mysterious item hidden in his bag. There he tells the story of how he was working on a cure for influenza and his greedy, unscrupulous boss releases a vaccine before it is ready, resulting in the 
death of many. I really like this movie. This is such a great example of these movies telling a short, contained, simple story, doing it really well, keeping the pacing really strong. This is just like a, a perfect example of exactly what these movies do really well. It creates mystery very well in that you're wondering what's in the bag, what is this strange confession about, and the story they're telling, it's probably the biggest story out of all of these movies, the most uh, long time spanning, the most involved, and it's a really good story. As far as supporting actors, you've got J. Carol Nash as his boss, who is, gosh, he, he probably is the most hateable character in all of these movies. Absolute scumbag on every level, a horrible boss who takes credit for all of Lon Chaney Jr.'s work. And by the way, I, I do find the simplicity of this movie kind of funny, the way it deals with the fact that Lon Chaney Jr. is a genius scientist, but he doesn't care about money, he doesn't care about credit, all he cares about is the goodness of mankind. And because of that, he's poor, his wife and kid are poor, she wishes he'd make more money, but he just doesn't want to do that, he just wants to do what's best for the world. And just the kind of overly simplicity that the movie deals with that, as opposed to his super hyper greedy boss, and the fact that there seems to be absolutely no regulation when it comes to releasing medicines or anything like that. I don't know that it was actually like that in the 1940s, but the FDA did exist, so I don't believe it. Uh, but the fact that he just releases this thing, they have no idea what it's gonna do, and he's just doing it to get money. He's just so over the top, evil, 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 that I really, really enjoy it. J. Carroll Nash is fantastic in this. This is just a good mystery, it's a good time. It's very interesting from start to finish. And I don't think it disappoints by the end. When you find out what's in his bag, that's that's pretty shocking. On the standards of these movies, it definitely is kind of shocking. And this movie, it probably goes darker than any of the other movies for a few different reasons. And I really appreciate that. I really enjoy Strange Confession. It's a great time. And finally, the final Inner Sanctum mystery from 1945, Pillow of Death. Yeah, you heard that right. This movie is called Pillow of Death. The Death Pillow. What a title. <laughs> Attorney Wayne Fletcher is having an affair with his secretary when Wayne's wife is found smothered to death by a pillow. Of course, he becomes the prime suspect, and as the police investigate the murder, a psychic with questionable motives tries to contact the deceased woman. Soon, Wayne begins hearing his dead wife speaking to him, and other people involved with the case begin to be killed one by one. That is a fantastic premise. You've got a psychic, you've got ghost voices, you've got multiple people being killed, Lon Chaney Jr. being accused of murder, and last but not least, you've got a pillow of death, a death pillow, a pillow that kills people by, well, it's not the pillow killing people, but that would be fun, but people are using pillows to kill people, pillow, death pillows. The problem is this movie is not very good. This is finally where the consistency of these movies really falls off. This movie just cannot keep this story interesting. It feels the slowest paced. There's the least interesting stuff going on. And Lon Chaney Jr. is definitely in this movie the least. He's technically the lead, but he's not really in it all that much, especially in the first half. The movie focuses much more so on the detective character. These movies often have detective characters. He is, I would say, the most boring of all of the detective characters. Overall, this is the worst supporting character Cast, I feel the most boring supporting cast and they carry the movie more than any of the other movies like Lon Chaney Jr. is very much the lead of all the rest a little bit less so in this one and that really hurts the movie and it's surprising because this is the most ghostly of all the movies they've got a seance scene and it's just kind of boring it just doesn't keep it going and uh the ending is actually pretty good i did enjoy the twist the final line was stupid but i mean like the final scene where you find out what was really going on good good stuff that's a good scene but overall this is definitely where the wheels fell off and then it was the last inner sanctum mystery now that is all six movies in the inner sanctum mysteries box set now for my ranking i'm definitely going to put pillow of death at the bottom definitely think that is the weakest of the movies then i would go the frozen ghost which is totally fine it's okay but it's the most like eh, okay of all the movies then i put dead man's eyes a solid mystery i think maybe it's the total lack of horror content that puts it a little bit lower for me personally then i would go strange confession i 
really enjoy the story of that. I really enjoy how kind of over the top it is. Then calling Dr. Death, that kicks things off in such a good way. And my number one, I would have to say, is Weird Woman. That, The Conjure Wife, Burn Witch Burn, that story, I think that's the best story of all these movies. It's got the most varied imagery, such a great supporting cast, the most supernatural horror content of all the movies, which definitely speaks to me personally. So that's it, folks. Please let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of these movies? Have you seen them? What do you think of the video? Are you thinking about checking these movies out? Let me know down below. And if you enjoy horror movies on Blu-ray, check out my last video where I talked through my entire series Screen Factory Blu-ray collection. That's uh, That Screen Factory collection is just right back there, but I talked through the entire thing in that video. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos like this. I would love to have you. Thank you so much for watching the Cobwebs channel. With all that said, don't forget to enjoy yourself today. Go out and have some fun. Watch some cool movies, and I'll see you later.